happens if you try and run a practice and do things like this as well. Francoise Lenjordi will give the last lecture in the Reconstructing Her Practice series, so I'd like to take this opportunity to again thank the Architectural Association, Alan Balfour and Mark Cousins for inviting this project here. Um, and for all their timely and enthusiastic support at a time when they showed the AA to be what it really should be, which is an island of enlightenment, and a time when other architectural institutions were very resistive to this project and very unsupporting. So thank you to the AA again. I'm very grateful. Françoise Jordan, as many of you will know, practices in Lyon with Gilles Perraudin as Jordan Perraudin. And as Peter Cook pointed out last year in his introduction to Françoise's lecture at the RIBA, Jean de Perraudin is unique amongst up-and-coming up French architectural practices. They don't live in Paris, they have lots of kids and they talk about them, and they do not cultivate the image of angst or anarchy currently so popular amongst similarly renowned French architects. In other words, they're pretty normal, but their work is, however, full of surprises and a sense of delight and playfulness that is quite unusual in the context in which they are operating. The contributors to this series cover a variety of architectural disciplines within and without constructed notions of practice of theory and practice of practice. Within this context, Françoise has been cast to play the part of apparently conventional practice. But as you will hopefully see, this practice, on closer inspection, reveals itself to be a quite different animal from that expected. So I'd like to thank Françoise for coming here tonight, despite all the obstacles, and welcome her warmly. Please welcome Françoise Jordan. Thank you very much. Um, well, what, what I'll do is just to, to show you projects and try not to explain exactly what we, we have done, but the way we have thought about these projects. And we have chosen to show you quite a lot of slides, uh, something one, one, 150, something like that. So I'll go quite quickly, but I'll try to... I'm not so tall, all right. <laughs> But uh, I'll try to explain through these projects uh, the, the, the way we are approaching architecture. Um, the, the first slides uh, are some photos of our house in Lyon. So I'd like to, to tell you that we are living in Lyon, we are working in Lyon, I was born in Lyon, educated in Lyon, uh, teaching in Lyon. And um, that is also very important in France because there are not so many people living somewhere else than in Paris. I mean, not so many architects trying to make good architecture somewhere else than in Paris. And it's very difficult to stay in Lyon and not to be in Paris when you are French. First uh, slide, I have the things, right, which one? Now, I, I'd like just to use one carousel and then the other one after. Well, it's nice to, to see these two photos, it's just the hazard, but there's something... Well. So, that is my house in Lyon, and my house with the Gilles Perraudin, as Francesca said, uh, we, well, we have not lots of kids, but just four, four children. <laughs> And uh, I think it's enough now. And uh, we have bought uh, a plot in, in Lyon where we decided to build our house and to live in. Uh, it means to try to live within our architecture. And that is not so easy to be able to, to, to live in the building you are, you, you are making. So this house is a very cheap house. It has been built now seven years ago. And uh, we had, of course, no money, so we decided to build it by ourselves. And for that reason, we decided to build first a shelter so that we could be sheltered during the work on the site and we could do all the wooden things by ourselves. Uh, next one. 
Or I, ca I can do it with the, which one? This, um, that would be easier. This one is okay? I don't know if it's that one. Yes, it is, right. So it's that so, one. Yes, and back. Uh, the house has been built very quickly. Uh, there's a metal frame, which is a, a tree structure. We'll talk about, uh, a lot about tree for the next project. I, I will show you. With a tree structure, a very light frame, which has been built in three days. And then, on this um, metal frame, we, uh, we put a canvas protecting the site, protecting the work and the workers under it. And then we made very simple wooden construction for the house. And I must say that that was a very um, interesting experience to make the house, to build it, and to live in. And at the end, I must say that I w it would be very difficult for me now to live somewhere else, because it's really a house where you feel just uh, like on holidays every time. This idea of trees um, must be related to the idea of building with the nature. Not with the nature, it means, of course, in the nature, in the, uh, in the natural environment, but also to try to... We are not sure that there is so much difference between built things and natural things. And perhaps now we have all the means, all the tools, all the technical and computer tools to make a new kind of architecture which could be called reactive architecture. Something which is not artificial, which is not natural, which is between natural and artificial things, and which can react to the environment. I think that is the most important thing for us at the moment. And this project was a project for the City of Music in Paris. Um, it was a competition project we lost, as uh, lots of competitions. You know, perhaps that in France, we have always, we had never any private and direct commission. So all of the things you will see there, if they are built, you'll see them <laughs> as a building. If they are not, they are lost competitions, and that's all. And all the public buildings are made with architectural competitions. The idea of this city of music was to provide two kinds of space. One space for the public, one space for the collectivity, one space for the music, which is the space under the forest. A large open space, just like a landscape, with rivers, with canyons, with uh, hills, and uh, where there are no facades, but just slopes along the hills. And the trees, the trees were protecting the public, these public spaces and also controlling the climate. Not only the climate as temperature, but also the light, the sounds, everything which is making the ambience. Uh, under this landscape, under the ground, under the artificial ground, were all the music spaces, the classrooms for the musicians. Ah, it's, there's a problem, yes. Yes. <laughs> and this, that was the first, very first beginning for us, working with very natural forms and being inspired by these natural forms, not only as structural forms, but also as um, living uh, skins or natural envelopes. Problems with the slides? We, y yes. we have been working now for thir 13 years, yes, 13 years together. 
and uh, we started working just uh, Gilles Perrault and I and now we are um, now we are 20 people in our office and I think next month or next summer will be much more so much more I mean 20, 20, 25 30 people because we have won all the competitions. That is why I'm very busy and what, that is why I was <laughs> late today, <laughs> excuse me. Oh. Is it because there are French slides? Or <laughs> Perhaps there are old ones, <laughs> that's the problem. Ah, oh, that's not, uh, is it, it's all right? Yeah. There's nothing before, no slide before, I thought it was slide not, closed. has a problem. Yeah. And the slide before this uh, problem one? <laughs> That's the problem of having working too long. <laughs> the slides are becoming old. So talking about nature and natural uh, shapes, forms and structures, we made a competition project in uh, Paris uh, of a bridge between the Gare de Lyon and Gare d'Austerlitz. And the, um, the client wanted to have a, a new kind of bridge for the third millenary, as they say it. You'll see that we made a very new project. We made it with uh, Norman Foster, with whom we made the competition too. And uh, the jury at the end have, uh, has chosen a very traditional uh, bridge with just one slab and two pillars, uh, stone pillars in the river. So you'll see that perhaps they had been a bit afraid by the project we made. Oh, yes, nothing, so that was very frightening. Thanks. Right. So that's the, the, the bridge under the bone project. The idea was to use a kind of very natural structural form, shape. Uh, through And through this structure, the um, traffic, traffic lines, and also pedestrian lines, pedestrian traffic, were considered just like usual flues, just like through a bone or through a muscle, just like the blood, the blood ves vessels, vessels, yes. <laughs> and we made this structure, or oh, made only of iron um, stainless steel sheets. It was a shell structure covered by stainless she sheets, and ref we thought it could be nice just to reflect the, the light of the river, of the Seine River, which is beautiful, and the, and the sky of Paris on it. Oh, I have something. We could. Oh. <laughs> right. That is a project. I think there's another one before, but uh, a project of urban furniture, which is going to be built this year. It's a competition we won some now four four years ago for um, 
um, yes, urban street furniture, street furniture for the town of Lyon. And uh, we decided because the, the the spirit of our town is very different from the other towns in France. It's a very secret town where the uh, it's a place uh, where there are. Um, how could I say? It, it was during the war, for instance, it was the place for the resistance of the French people. It was the place of the, it was the capital of the Gallic uh, state against the Roman. It was, it is the place for, you know, making the tables turning and moving. And it's a very religious place too. And everything is secret. Everything is what we think. Everything is living under the ground. And the geography also is very important. There are two rivers, very, and one is very big, the Rhone River, very strong. It's the man, and another one, which is the Seine River, the woman, which is also quite a big river, much bigger than the Seine in Paris, for instance. And all these pieces of the geography have, uh, in a way, have made the, the brain of the people living there the idea of the water going through the ground and the big hills and the hill, we have two hills. One is the hill for praying and one is the hill for working. And uh, I think when you're working some t somewhere, you must try to find this uh, spirit of this uh, ghost, or, yes, of, of the place where you are living there and to try to express it and express this uh, imaginary of the people uh, living there and try to make it, to, to take it and to put it in the light. And that is what we made there with these spines, which are of different height, coming through the ground, going to the light and supporting different things. They are all um, aluminium precast pieces well, and they are just like plants and flowers. And on these things, you, on these spines, you might uh, branch, um, connect different uh, elements according to y the use you are waiting for, for this kind of street furniture. And using the same kind of concept, using the idea of this underground uh, life in the town, we were invited, we, we won an, another competition for signals for the underground uh, system in Lyon. And there we, we thought that the underground life had to be also expressed in a way in the street. And we thought that we could imagine that there are some, um, some animals, some worms or dragoons living in the underground and sometimes showing their head on the surface to tell the people we are here and we are still living there. And that was also very important because we thought also that it's uh, usual now to make very beautiful underground station with white panels inside, just like in hospitals or clinics with ceramics and light, very uh, bright light and things like that. And we think that to live in the underground can't be something usual. You must feel it. You must be, it's important to be in a way a bit afraid of being in the underground. That is wonderful. Just like in, if you are in a plane, if we had no windows just to look, what is the danger? falling down, that would not be very interesting. So we built these things, we won the competition, and when the politics saw the project, they were very interested in and they have chosen us. But then they thought about that and they said, well, that's not possible, we have made a very big mistake. But, so what they did is that they asked us to make the studies and to build the first thing in one night but hidden by a huge canvas. And they asked the press, the journalists, to come at 9 o'clock. And uh, we had to, uh, to show the animal to the press. And uh, they said, if they are not OK, if they don't like it, we'll destroy it immediately. <laughs> so, 
And in fact, the people were so happy with that that even the population asked us and asked the, the mayor to, to pay for other animals in other places in the, in, in the town. That, that was great. So we, we, can't, we can sometimes, sometimes imagine that not all the populations are stupid. <laughs> and not every time. Talking about the underground system, that is the underground station we made in the suburb of Lyon. And uh, at the beginning of the project, that was a cornfield. And uh, we decided that an underground station could not be there just like a station. So we decided to put the underground station under a building. But we had no money to build the building. So after 10 years, they asked us to make a temporary cover for the underground station. That is what, what, what you see there is the ephemeral um, sheltering of the station which is in the, in the underground. This uh, shelter should last now seven years, seven years more. That's all, ten years. I must tell that because it's not the Phoenicians, the, the things are just uh, designed to last 10 years and not more. <coughs> that is the underground station which is completely different and the idea is to, to, to have something carved in, in the underground, not to lie to the people, not to tell them you are in a, an office building or in a clinic, they are in the underground and they must feel that there is something very heavy above their head. So what you see here are the different pillars which will be able to bear the 10 stories building which is designed on the underground station. It is rough concrete. You will see that the colors are very different on the different slides because it's only artificial light and it's diff very difficult to to photography it. Um, here you are in the central hall, the main hall of the station, which is opened under the cover, and which could be, which should have been uh, common with the hall of the building uh, on the station. So you can see here the trunks and the branches of the trees, which are rooted in the station, just like in ruins where in these beautiful um, drawings of these old Roman ruins and the, the, the trees coming through. The concrete work is wonderful and uh, we have designed everything uh, that was very complicated because we were not architect for the, the station, we were just for the decoration at this site. So they asked us to choose the colour the color of the ceramics and things like that. And we decided that we, we have never used any color in our buildings, as you will see. That is too difficult for us at the moment. I think we are too young. Some <laughs> times later, we'll be able to do that. I think it's very important to be able to, do, to, to use color, but we are not at the moment. So that is why we are always using rough material to color the buildings we are making. And here we could not draw anything. So that was also the beginning for us to work and work and work with models. For instance, for the columns, we made very big models of one meter, one meter fifty centimeters high. And then we, we made sculptures with them, trying to, to find the, better, uh, the best way to, um, to, to collect the efforts from the building, from the, the pillars to the ground, through the vaults, through the arches, and then uh, through the pillar. Uh, that is why there are all these shapes there. And uh, we made them just like sculptures with our hands in plaster. And then we took all the dimensions on the sculpture, and then we drew, we drew, we drew them. Uh, on a paper, and then engineers and engineers ha have taken the papers and put it in a computer, 
and the computer has eaten and digested and gave us uh, new drawings and we have corrected every drawing to make it to smooth the different curves and things like that. That was a huge process. Now it would be much easier. We have only computers in our office and it's very common with, with very simple sof software and uh, it's the only way now for us to work because our projects are more and more complicated just like nature is more and more complicated just like what we call sometimes cows which is not cows which it, is kind of very difficult to order to find This idea of having trees, of making a new climate has been quite common in our projects. It's not, not only a question of making a new climate, of saving energy or things like that. It's also a kind of attempt to, uh, to make new social places. I must say that I feel very Latin in the way I'm living. I mean the public spaces, the street, the places, the squares, the parks. Uh, for me there are these southern places you can find in Barcelona, in, uh, in Madrid, in uh, Roma, in uh, all these places. And I feel closer to these people than to the Parisian people, for instance. And I think uh, it's our... Uh, job, our work to not to be only designers or artists or technicians, but also to have our own idea of the society, of the collectivity, and we, we must provide the space for our point of view about the society and the world. Well, I've been educated during the 70s, and I think. I'm a bit um, after 68 <laughs> a woman, that is why perhaps I have this kind of discourse, but I'm not sure, I think that is quite natural. And here, that was a school in Roma, <coughs> a school in Roma, and that is a section of the building, just a very small piece. You must imagine that the whole project was this kind of canopy of crumbled, crumbled paper, crumbled paper, uh, put on three structures and under this paper the different buildings to provide public, sheltered, open space. Within this uh, idea of uh, public space, of offering public space and comfortable public space for the collectivity, we made that uh, competition project in Germany, in Herne-Sodingen. And um, this, uh, we won this competition. And we have now lost two years. They, they had no money to build it. So, and we are just starting again the studies. It will be built next year, in uh, 95, the beginning of the work on site. This uh, project is a project for uh, they call uh, Fort Bildungsakademie. It's a kind of training school for people working for the government. Well, they can spend their three or four days to, to discuss with them, to discuss with technicians, to learn more about their, their job, their work. And we had a park to, to design, and in the park to put this building. And that building should had to be very experimental in terms of energy saving and new concepts about climate. So we made, well, the park, we decided you don't need any park in the Ruhrgebiet, the, the, the region of the Ruhr. Uh, there are many parks and many green pieces of land because there is no factory any longer, so they, they are making parks on these plots. So what we thought is just to give it to the nature and to make a kind of forest on it and to put in the forest a building. And this building is made of three parts. The glass, a very huge glass house of two hectares surface area and under this glass house two wooden buildings. 
<coughs> yes, it's uh, upside down. <laughs> but the idea is to have different orders, the glass house, the two wooden buildings, and the park, and thus to superpose the different logics all together to make a kind of sandwich of all the things and to make them existing together with all their own logic and freedom to exist by themselves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the idea is just to make a kind of Mediterranean climate that is what we say to the German people. I'm not sure that it will be really Mediterranean, but it will be nicer than what they have now, especially in the rogue bit, which is uh, not really wonderful. <laughs> and uh, to, to try to create a new intermediary climate and to have then wooden buildings, which will be quite easy to build because there is no waterproofing problem. The, you can change them as um, often as you as you wish and just like in our house you can build the, the wooden buildings when the glass house is completed so it's a way also to provide shelter for the people working and that is also important because now it's very difficult to find people wanting to, to, to build things and you just find some uh, people coming from Africa or things like that which are not able really to work because they don't, uh, they, they, I mean the German, the English, the French people, they don't want to work when it is 10 degrees under zero or when it's raining or when it is too hot. So the idea here is to make very huge and very quickly made structure and under this structure to provide a nice place to work for the people when they will, when they will build it. And the, of course, because it's a very experimental building, not experimental, it must be a kind of uh, manifest, <coughs> manifest, manifesto. manifesto for this region, for the IBA, Internationale Bauausstellung Emscher Park, which is the equivalent from the, uh, the Berlin IBA of the last years. And uh, the, all the materials must be chosen also considering the energy problem. So we are just using wood and uh, steel, but no aluminium, for instance, just concrete, but without steel inside, or things like that. So the building is completely transparent. It's um, 17 uh, meters high and uh, 180 meters long. Mm -hmm. oh, I was really I was <laughs> hurrying too much when <laughs> I put the slides. But I think uh, you can imagine you are three-dimensional people, so you can imagine this uh, section of the model with the different buildings in. Well, right. <laughs> this way so it doesn't matter anyway. There are other slides, other photos of the model if they are in the good way, uh, right. So that is a section, you can see these two buildings with different relations. There is no pillars, I mean there is no connection between the different structures. The, the pillars, the mast of the glass house are, are not going through the building, they are independent. Everything is independent, everything is living in the other logic but independently of the logic. <coughs> Of course, the idea for this training school is to make the people living together. So that is, that, that is also, um, it, it involves also this idea, a social idea of making space for the people, not only for architecture, but for the people to live and to discuss with them, even for struggling, even for debating for between them. And because, because we, are, we, 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 must, we can be very free under this cover without any waterproofing 
problem. We can make the forms and the shapes we, we need, we want. It's just like partitions and not structural uh, building. Um, now the studies are uh, beginning and we are working also on the same concept for the European community at the moment with a research program about what we call the microclimatic envelope. The idea is to try to, uh, to design an envelope, kind of this glass house, in the kind of same way, not exactly the same envelope, but this kind of envelope, but including different uh, solar cells, panels, for instance, and different things, technical things, which could be put on existing buildings, covering existing buildings. It's also a kind of idea of Buckminster Fuller with the New York covering project. But um, now it is possible. <coughs> So that was the competition project. They thought we had not worked uh, enough, so they made a second stage. It's true that we made the project very, very quickly in four days for the competition, but it was something very strong. I mean, we were bearing this idea for so long that it was really very clear to make it in very short time. Another project with this idea of uh, trees, of shelter, and it's a project for New Caledonia. And uh, the French people are feel quite guilty, guilty, coupable, guilty, guilty with their colonies. So here they decided to make um, a cultural center and that is a competition project which has been won by Renzo Piano. But we decided for that wonderful place, which is Numea in Caledonia, that it was not possible to make architecture there. Because they don't need anything. In these places, you just s stay under a tree, you sleep there, you, with your hand, you take a coconut and you eat it, and that's all. You don't need anything. I mean, you don't have, there is no architectural, architectural culture because there is no need of shelter, really, no need of, of uh, architecture. So we, did, we, we thought that, uh, uh, so Renzo Piano, which is, has made a wonderful project, but uh, it's an architectural project. And here we, we made just a landscape. The problem was more for the people in a plane coming to Numea to see where is the, the museum, the cultural center. And um, we thought that it was much more interesting to make these flowers, these colored flowers, able to protect just boxes, just for privacy, not for making space. So the idea here was just to accompany the, um, um, just finding the German names, the uh, prom promenade, the, the walk, yes, the walk, the promenade, the walk of the people, mm -hmm. so that they know where they have to go after this place, they go to this one, and that's all. So they are just signals, and they are also collecting energy, wind energy and sun and rain also to protect the people too. But that's all. And under these flowers, what we call the flower tree, we, we had just wooden boxes, just for privacy and that's all, with no, no glass, nothing, just wooden small louvers for the, the view, the direct views and that's all. And not to touch the ground, to have, it, have them quite independent from the ground, not to destroy the nature which is really wonderful there beautiful flowers and uh, it's a kind of paradise. Uh, coming back to the reality, <laughs> mm -hmm. 
That is a very ugly sight for one of the last projects uh, we made at uh, the International School in Lyon, but where we developed also some, uh, some ideas. I'd like first to say that we have always made very cheap projects, and uh, uh, we are quite um, fed up with these very low budgets <laughs> at the moment, because you know that it is very difficult. And we have always said that uh, we must first make the space and then we'll choose the materials on the ground and the walls and things like that because you can't change the volumes and the space, you can change the, uh, the carpet or things like that, there's no problem. So sometimes the people are saying it's very poor, that's true, it is poor because it's very cheap. <laughs> this building is uh, should be in a new district in Lyon, but because of the economical uh, crisis the last uh, four years, uh, nothing has been, no factory has been destroyed and nothing has been built. But you can see here, uh, along the river, along the Rhone River, there is a kind of park, and the whole building should be in a park on the town planning. This building is for uh, 2,000 pupils. It's an international school, it's, it's a pu public open school, and it's for pupils from six years old to 20 years old. And they are beginning, well, I must um, explain. They are beginning here when they are six, and then when they grow up, they are going through the building <coughs> up to the head where is the director and the different um, uh, offices and housing there. Uh, through the building, well, that is the classroom building, the waiting building, just for classrooms. All the classrooms are here, and here is kind of slice of atrium where are all the vertical and horizontal circulation. In the middle here is what they call the center of life. It's the place where are all the common activities. It means there are two sporting halls, one uh, library with a lecture hall and the uh, storage, one uh, lecture hall, one playing hall for the small uh, pupils, and three restaurants, and the streets connecting the, what we call the lycée from uh, 14 to 20, and here the college, secondary school uh, from 11 to 14, and from 6 to 11 here. And the people, because the people are very young, and they are able to go to climb the stairs in, is in, in an easier way when they are older, we put only three stories there and seven on the other part. <laughs> the, um, we, we decided to put the classrooms there because of the orientation of the classrooms, which are uh, which is it's the best place here. It's south and south east. On the western part here is the view to the Rome River. So we decided that we, we, we should open this facade to the river. <coughs> and this common space here is designed in the same way of these tree structures or flower trees or, or giant canopies or glass house. It's the idea of a cover which is independent from the building under it. So you see here this cover which is here is planted, that was, the building was not completed there and the grass had not um, grown up very much. Now there are flowers and at the different period of the year with the red ones and yellow ones and white ones. And uh, you can see here in the middle the street, the, the glass roof of the street and the cover which is planted so that all the classrooms have no views on very on usual dirty roofs. They have always the grass. 
and that is the street inside. As you see, it's a double curved glass roof, and it's made of 800 different pieces of glass, which are all in very different position because of this double curved uh, geometry. And they are just screwed and glued together. This roof is not supported, it is hanged to these masts, which are always perpendicular to the general curve of the roof. That is why they are in different positions, because the curves are not the same everywhere. And they are quite independent. There are no cables, for instance, coming from the roof to the ground, because we don't need anything. There is um, weight enough on the roof. We don't have to, to attach it to, to the ground. Okay. Here's the roof, as you see. We had to invent new elements to connect four pieces of glass, which are in different position. Uh, it's the only colored piece of our architecture. They are blue and gold. We called them spiders, because there are spiders on the, on the ceiling. And uh, they have different legs to connect the pieces of glass. And the roof is, uh, it's a roof and it's a ground too. And that is quite interesting. When you're in the building, you can feel this, well, you have two, there are two ideas together. One is to be under the ground and the other one is to be on the ground. And that is quite interesting to have this double, um, double mind, double That is the glass roof. <coughs> and the spiders. These have only two legs. Most of them have four. We'll see another slide with them. <coughs> and the geometry of the cover has not, is not, um, how can I say, uh, an aesthetic point of view. It's just a functional one. We needed somewhere a different, different heights. For instance, that is a tennis international uh, sporting hole. So we needed to have nine meters at this point and this point eight and things like that. So we put the cover at the exact height we needed for functional reasons at the different places. That is why it's quite just like an, an old car. What's called cabossy? Cabossy? Dented. Dented. Yeah. That was a sporting hole. That was the first skins. <coughs> that is the pyramid of the um, um, reading place of the lecture, um, not lecture hall, of the reading hall or, how do you say? Library. library? Yes, only library, but there is no storage there, only the place to read. And it's uh, 14 meters height pyramid, but with seven, uh, uh, se seven faces, yeah, seven sides, yes. Just like the Umberto Eco library, you know it. <laughs> that is why we decided to have it, because it was so fantastic place, and uh, it's really very difficult, because you know you can't draw it. It's impossible to draw it with ge only geometry. You just have to calculate it. That's so that is why it's quite interesting for architects, I think. The other place, interesting place, the conus, where are the different... Uh, it's a play, playing ground for the young children, but I think it's more a chapel than something else. And it's going through the roof to catch the, the light from the outside. I can see the library on the right. <coughs> Through the glass roof, the street. So 
So the section, you see that this um, common space center of life is connected to the wa waving building with the, the, the roof and under the roof, the different buildings independent from the, from the cover, from the planted cover. The other facade is quite different. That is where there are the seven stories um, building. As you see here, the idea was to make a kind of giant atrium with the kind of buffer zones, climatic buffer zones, where the temperature is between exterior and interior. So the whole facade is opening with the very simple glass louvers all along the facade and as you see here it's very transparent and changing according to the light that is not the good way also so there's another one after it's okay. right right so you can see here the different mezzanines and stairs and the classrooms on the right and the balconies and the lifts, the toilets, all the technical services are in the boxes between the glass facade, in this buffer zone between the glass facade and the facade of the classrooms. The, this facade on the other side, along the classroom, is protected by uh, Bray Soleil, you can see them which have, in, have been calculated according to the, the exact position of the sun at, during the classroom uh, time. And that is why they are suspended, because they have been put in different, with different angles all along the facade, so they are waving along the facade. That is quite uh, nice to see. You can see here elements, some of these wings protecting the facade, the southern and eastern facade. The sketch of these <coughs> elements on the... <laughs> and the blue spiders. Um, a project for a zoo. Project for a zoo, a competition we lost, but nobody has won, so <laughs> that's okay. The, it was just before the change of the government, so the last one had no time to choose and the new one didn't want to pay, so. And uh, there, it was uh, to change the Zoo de Vincennes in Paris, and we decided to make quite a new concept for a new zoo, just like the, the bridge in Paris. And there we decided to have different slices superposed all together, different codes. One for the animals, the landscape. One for the structure, <coughs> the nature, the ground, and under the ground, the people. So the animals were on the roof and the people under the roof. And sometimes there are some connection points. Usually when you are in, the, in a zoo, you don't know exactly who are the animals and who are the people. Because uh, there are so many people there that you, you, you don't know where to, to, to see any animal and they are so poor, so that is really terrible usually. So we thought that it was better just to keep the nature for them and just to allow the people to make just like in a safari, a photo safari, to, to, to come have a look to the animals and just go down and to keep silence. So we decided to put a new landscape on the existing platform and between this landscape and the existing platform to put all the people and the different places where you can buy Coca-Cola and, Coca and cornflakes and things like that and just to have nothing on the landscape. And that is the one of the main sections. You can see the people are on the ground, but under the landscape, and the animals. And sometimes there are some places which are organized to have a look to the animals. 
there are stairs, there are lifts to go on the landscape and then you, you go back down and a bit further and then up and then back and a bit further not to destroy the nature and not to disturb the animals too. That was the zoo. I think they, they had some... Um, <coughs> and the entrance were, was on the road. You see, that is the entrance. So we doubled the surface of the zoo with that system. And for us, it was, I think, perhaps the m something very important because we considered, really, in that project, no difference between what is natural and artificial. There's a kind of continuity between the two systems. Um, yes. <coughs> ah, yes. So, so now something more serious. <laughs> it's social housing. So I, I, I'll show you two two buildings we have made at the moment. Now we, are, we, are, we have two other projects, one in Paris and one in Lyon, which are different. That is social housing, so very low cost uh, housing in the suburb of Lyon. Um, it's really very difficult to, to make something with very low budget. Um, well, I'm not sure we'll do it again. <laughs> There's also something which is quite recurrent in our work, is this idea of under and over, up and down, the sky and the roots, and uh, light, the opposition between two types of structure. One is light, one is heavy, one is transparent, one is opaque, one is concrete, one is wood, one is glass, one is steel, one is... Uh, this question of balance, because I think most of the architects, they just forget what they are. It, uh, they have their, their shoes in the, in the earth, in the, in the mood, in the mud, in the mud, yes, especially architects. And they have uh, their head in, in the light and in the sky. And I, I think I, I'm always arguing with some of my friends in, in France, just like uh, uh, Jean Nouvel or Dominique Perrault, who are working, working in a way of making immaterial architecture. And I'm sure they are wrong. I'm sure it's just a political point of view, just telling to the people, you are transparent. What you are making can be seen by everybody. And that's not true. We need some secret. We need to be hidden sometimes. We need to, and especially with the computers and the videos and the, uh, and the Nintendo <laughs> games and the things like that. We need to eat, we need to drink, we need to, to love, we need to, to be in contact with the reality of the life, and especially in architecture. Well, that's a very philosophical point of view. You might not share it, but... Uh, I'm happier than the, the immaterial architects, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so that is the roof of the building with the different scales, sc um, like a lizard. Mm -hmm. So, um, yes, and that what was really funny was that all the neighborhood, you can see here one of the buildings there with the terrace uh, roofs. When they saw the building, they went to the council to tell, what is this building you are going to build with this roof? <coughs> it is not integrated to the environment. We want to have a terrace roof. And that was, has been very difficult to, to make them um, accepting the, uh, this roof, which is just a roof, but um, there are no roofs there. So there are duplex on the upper levels, of course, and simplex flats on the first ones with the uh, walls which are protecting the private lives. Very easy things. 
and the, the shape, the, the curve of the thing is just to protect the southern <laughs> courtyard where all the chil children can play there. And on the north, the building is protected by the, by the cover, by the roof, um, and uh, there are the car parks there and the entrance of the building. <coughs> so it's something very, well, easy, common. <laughs> That is also social housing, but for students. I mean, the same budget, but for students. And uh, it's uh, small, well, we were asked to make 180 flats, 80 rooms for students, and we decided to, to make the rooms, the bedrooms smaller, and to have one living room for three bedrooms. So uh, that is what we did uh, here. So it's kinds of houses and here is one bedroom, two and three with a common double height uh, living room and this bedroom belongs to the other one. There's a laser pointer if you want to use There's a pointer. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, <coughs> yes, and we decided also to put all the money on the facade because that's the main problem with social housing and students' housing too, with the graffitis and the, the papers glued and things like that. <coughs> very simple, simple, easy made, a very quickly made project. Everything is precast, so it's only steel structure and uh, uh, aluminium <coughs> panels. So the, the, the wings, they are just protecting the facade and protecting also the alley, which is the, the way of going from a, a, a living room to another one, instead of having a corridor. <laughs> well, another project, a competition we lost last month <laughs> for housing in Paris. Uh, on the upper, uh, upper space of the, on the slide, you can see here the L elements of the giant library of Dominique Perrault in Paris. And uh, the green thing is our building here. And it's social housing too. <coughs> and uh, we were asked to have very common buildings on the first levels, and then we were free of doing what we wanted to. So we decided to express this idea and to have exactly the same facade as the, the, the next one on the street. We took the facade and we put it there, telling, well, we could do that, exactly the same. But on the roof, to build something else, to build another town on the roof of Paris. And with the planted roof, of course. Well, they said it was a bit too strong in front of the big library. Yeah. <laughs> well. It's so, really funny how the juries are sometimes thinking. I think that is very important, this idea of superposing different logics all together and to make them, to let them free to exist, to coexist all over the other. a competition which will be judged next Monday. So you won't say anything to anybody, <laughs> uh, because there are some English competitors. <laughs> it's a factory in Germany, a big one, 30,000 square meters. And, well, we made it very simple. I, I won't have to say anything anyway. <laughs> you will understand by yourself.
And uh, for the just two other things, I'll go quickly because I'm quite late. <laughs> Um, that is a university in Paris, we are, which is now beginning on site. And there are two buildings. One is this one is for amphitheaters on the ground level, car parks in the underground, and on it a restaurant, huge restaurant for 2,000 people. And uh, there also there are the different logics all together. We'll see the, the, the amphitheaters are expressing themselves like independent volumes in the structure. And then on the restaurant, it's something completely different also. And as you see, the structure of the restaurant, the pillars, are very thin element, uh, elements and which are not vertical. Because we had... Um, so it's really laser. Here is the grid of the car park, and across this grid are the different amphitheaters. Here is the grid, which is uh, an economical, economic grid, very cheap grid for the roof, and there is no, con no geometric uh, connection between the two things. That is why the pillars are in very different directions. So we put as many pillars as we wanted, but they are all in different directions, and that will create the, the architecture and this idea of this kind of forest where the trees are very long and thin. And I think there will be for the first time some green color there, <laughs> like it is on the model. And um, the, the, the first idea, in fact, was to, to have a kind of material in which the spaces were carved. So, of course, we, we couldn't do that. So we decided to have an exterior skin and an interior one and to have, to make the thing just as if they were carved with very deep windows of six or seven meters um, depth. So that is the, the one of the last models. You can see here the structure coming from the car park, going through or out of the amphitheaters. Sometimes they are in when there is no problem, where there is no problem. And sometimes they are just beams. And uh, the outdoor facade is here. And the connection between the outdoor facade and the interior facade is made by the uh, puits de lumière here, which are everywhere different. And the cone, the cone structure of the entrance here with <coughs> is a double enveloped cone with stairs between the two envelopes. Very good. <laughs> I'm not sure to have understood everything in that project at the moment because it's so difficult as a geometry that uh, you know, for instance, to oh, to, to, uh, to know the curve of this thing connecting with these different uh, things that is curved, the facade is curved, that is another curve, that is inclined, that is also inclined, and there are the stairs inside. It's really very difficult. I hope we'll be able to build it. Well, the builders will be able to build it, but. Um, they will have, well, that was the goal. And that's the roof, with the idea of the superposition, with the different codes of the roof all together. And that will be also uh, one of the first essays with color. That is what we call the atmospheric roof. There is, um, for instance, it would be very difficult to explain, but there are things moving uh, with the light and with the wind. For instance, on the glass roof, we had leaves, on articulated with, uh, leaves, which are moving with the wind, and they are made of stainless steel, and they are reflecting the light through the glass, which is colored of different colors. And then this light I is moving, of course, and, the colored, and this light is also reflected under the glass roof by other leaves also. And it will make different plays with the colors and the light inside. And the idea is to 
Um, because now I think we are sometimes working with an, a schizophrenic architecture. There is outdoor and inside. And you, when you are inside, you don't know what happens outdoor. And what we try to, m to make is to, to try to find another type of relation between outdoor and inside and to, 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 to keep the people um, having in their mind what happens, what, what, what they, they must be able to feel in what environment they are. <coughs> So that is the roof, that is from the outside, and before it was from the inside. Mm. So <laughs> that was the first building we saw, that was the competition, one of the competitions model, and that is the other building we are building at the moment. And so, for the university, which is a university, there are so many students in France that we are making universities, we don't know what they will learn there if there will be medicine, engineers, architects, or anything else. And building lots of universities, so that is great for architects, but that is very difficult too, because we are used, and especially Gia and I, we are used to use the function of the, of the things to make the architecture, and that was not possible. So we decided to express this idea of not being able to express the function. So <laughs> we, made, we made this facade here, which is completely um, hazard facade. We made different patterns of golden patterns, which are assembled together to protect the facade from the sun, so they are, it's more opaque in, in certain zones and less opaque in other uh, places because the sun is not coming the same way and things like that. And behind this facade, there are we, we put all the different things, all the um, furniture, the shelves, the tables, and, um, and, uh, and cupboards with doors and curtains and everything. So we'll know if there are computers behind, or rabbits, or, or plants, or anything. So the function will be in the facade. And there is no connection between the use and the grid of the furniture behind and the grid of the facade, something very independent. And for the end, just to show you a few, <laughs> few slides of the first building uh, we did. It was just, uh, uh, I had my diploma just uh, one year before being invited for the competition and before winning it. And it is the School of Architecture in Lyon. So I was very young, <laughs> and it was very difficult, because to build an architecture school, I think it's just like a building a cathedral. It's, uh, you can't make any mistake. I'm sure we made, but uh, we tried not to make any mistake. So the School of Architecture with the head for the teachers and the administrative people and the body for the students and the ground level for the classrooms, for the masters, where the truth, where the students must be silent, where only the teachers are speaking, and um, the upper level, which is light, which is transparent, which is made with a very simple grid, where the students are free, free to think what they want to think, where they are making the projects. And the wings, sorry, the wings, the wings protecting the facade, which are the wings of Icarus, the son of Didelis, trying to, to fly with his own wings and burning his wings. And I think that is really the reality of the architectural work. <laughs> Always going further, but not really succeeding in doing that. That is the place for the teachers, for the truth, for a kind of religious space. The interior street with the wooden structure, the glass roof, which was the first flat glass roof we made, only screwed, simple, simple glazed 
screwed glazed and screwed glass and glued all the panels glued together and the wooden pieces, wooden elements the first time we worked with precast steel elements it's very old <laughs> It's quite, it seems for me to be very rigid now when I look at it. We are on more fluent and perhaps living things now. But well, it was it's a good building. <laughs> exactly the same thing we made with the columns, for instance, of the metro station. We, we worked with the engineers, with with Peter Rice too for that the things and the administrative series severe block that's all Questions? Oh, critics? Critics? Mm -hmm. Could I, I ask about the system of competitions, which mm -hmm. you mentioned right at the very start and mm -hmm. reoccurred throughout your talk? Um, is it, is it correct that every public building in France there has to be a competition? Oh, public? yes, yes. And if that is the case, is this a good idea? Oh, yes. I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is because... Um, <clears throat> well, I was, I was born as an architect. <laughs> uh, when I had my diploma, it was the beginning of that system. And uh, I have no connections with uh, any architect any promoter, anything. My, my, my father is commercial people, my mother a teacher, uh, Gilles' father is working in a factory and, uh, and uh, no cultural, no social connections with the building world, architects or promoters or, or builders. So to get any work, I, I, I want to say I have, I, I had, n I have never worked in an other office uh, than mine. Because when I was studying, I had there was no work in France, so it wasn't possible to work. When I was studying, there were only strikes in the schools, and that was the best way to learn things, I think, <laughs> better than than without and uh, so I w it was possible just to decide to put to, to rent a place to say that's my office now I will work 20 hours a day <laughs> and make competitions and competitions and other competitions one after the other and some sometime I will want one and that is what happened for us it was not the. It was very quickly done, a European one, and then we were invited because we were published and selected, invited for our third competitions, another one, another one. So for young architects, it's the only way to 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 have some work. So that is the first thing. Then, for young architect without any connections, social connections. Uh, the other thing is that every competition is a very big struggle against the other competitors, but against the office also, and against us, because we have every time at every competition the, the need 
to invent new things, reinvent new things and new architecture. And also we have generally 20 or 30 minutes to present the project to the jury and uh, to, to be able to tell everything on a project in 20 minutes it's a great lesson you know that you you can't have on one project 20 ideas but one or two but which must be must be rich enough to then uh, involve other and other and other ideas so that is the other pedagogical thing the other thing is that with the competitions there are juries and the juries in France are made of one-third politics, one-third users and one-third architects. So nobody has the power. So they must work together, there are seven or twenty or, or yes, twenty, that's the maximum. And uh, it's really impossible well, in some very small places, but usually it's really impossible to decide before the competition who will win. It's really something, f some, something open. So th that is really great. And the competitions are paid. Not well paid, but enough just to cover the, the expenses, not our salary, not our um, um, fees but the, the people working for us and the paper and the ink and things like that. Uh, so we could not, um, uh, we could not uh, have an office only with competition, but for us it's 40% of our activity. We are making something like 16 or 17 competition each year in France, in <coughs> Germany, in Italy, in Spain, in the United States, um, different places. And uh, it's really exhausting. <laughs> I think uh, it will be more and more difficult to get older <laughs> as an architect now with this competition system, but I think it's really the best way to make architecture and to have very good architecture. I think in France, these last 10 and 15 years, uh, the, uh, all the architecture has changed and they are really very good um, the, the common architecture is quite good I mean it's that uh, there are plenty of young architects who are between 25 and 35 uh, who are really gifted <laughs> yes uh, who are a able to make very good architecture everywhere and that is very important and also with the competition pr uh, system it became public and mediatic uh, mediatic uh, through the the newspapers and the television and everything like that so the politics had to be very clear with the choice and that had also to um, in a way it's a bit too fashionable in France that is the problem uh, it means it's very fashionable to work with that architect on the other one and you can uh, see him uh, with uh, Christian Dior and Isabelle Adjani and Gerard de Bardieu and um, okay it's the same showbiz uh, system but in, in the other end it, it won't be possible now for any president any politic to, to tell an architect you will do that project uh, just well make a kind of uh, arrangement altogether. That won't be possible. It's a public thing now. Everybody can talk about architecture. Everybody has hi hi his opinion. And without competitions, it won't be possible because it would be private command. So that is why, even if it is really exhausting, and even if we, sometimes we, we think, well, we have done all these things. We have made 200 projects at the moment in the office in 13 years, from the first beginning where we were two up to now. <coughs> it's a lot of work. And now we think, well, we have done that and that and that, and all of our projects have been published. Why couldn't we find a good client telling us, well, you have 200 housing to make, uh, are you okay? It never happens. So sometimes I say, well, I I'd like to rest a bit. I'd like not always to have to to convince the people that I am a good architect, you know, 
they should know it. <laughs> so, in a way, I, 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 t I, I think that, but in another way, if it was like that, it, it won't work. But it's really exhausting, yes. Much more exhausting than care for big offices, for instance, in, uh, in Great Britain, which are comfortable. <laughs> I mean, even uh, people like Jean Nouvel are, you know, they are very uneasy. They, uh, it's difficult for them too, even if they are very fashionable at the moment. <laughs> okay, are there any more questions? Yes. Uh, I was just wondering, uh, in your projects, have you found that the users have reacted to your buildings in the way that you had imagined they would, or <coughs> had you, ha you had to modify your strategy? With public buildings, it's really nice because you never work with the users. <laughs> <laughs> you have the politics and the director, which will change when the building will be built. So that is nice and very difficult too. Um, for instance, the School of Architecture was so anyway, so published everywhere, that it's a kind of historical monument <laughs> at the moment. And it's terrible to see that. The, the building is really nice and it's, they have no money uh, in that school, but there's no, nothing, no graffiti, nothing. Because oh, the students, they can't do anything on the building, they can't glue anything, they must keep it just like a monument. So I think that's not a good reaction. The international school, uh, the reaction were not good at all at the beginning, but not because of the architecture, uh, because of the site, because uh, you know it's very snub, um, snob, snob, snobbish, very snobbish to be in these uh, international schools. It's not private, it's public. You don't pay anything, but uh, you know you are the son of the president of this big um, American society or things like that. So very snobbish. And they were in a very uh, traditional um, city centre district, uh, with very uh, bourgeois, how is it called? Bourgeois. Bourgeois. <laughs> bourgeois buildings, you know, kind of image. And now they are in the suburb <laughs> with these factories and everything, so they didn't want to be there, it was not their image. So I think sometimes <laughs> the question is not the question of architecture, and the people are confusing architecture and other things. And, um, but I think that anyway, with the buildings we are making, except the dragoons who had a very big success, uh, we had always to spend a lot of time with the users then to explain to them the culture of the building, how they had to use it, the way they must understand it to be able to use it in the best way. The problem is that uh, the public, all the buildings we have made are very cheap building. So the problems are always the same. It's, uh, you have put a white painting on the wall, it's becoming dirty. Uh, why, why, did, why didn't you put some stone or you know, things like that? But we had no money for that. And they are confusing also the idea of the program and the budget and the architecture. Um, but that's not a problem for us. I mean, I'm sure the architects are not really working for the users now. They are working for the whole collectivity. Okay. Um, I think we should end there. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Francoise and Jodard very much uh, for speaking this evening. Uh, but also, as I'm sure you're aware, this is like the last uh, talk in the series. Um, I'd like to give my thanks to Alan Balfour who made this kind of possible, uh, for Francesca Hughes who kind of organized uh, the speakers, and perhaps mostly uh, to you, especially those who've come to all the series um, and showing their interest and, and commitment to raising this topic. Maybe in about five years' time uh, we should sort of revisit the series. Um, perhaps actually kind of calling it practicing her reconstruction. <laughs> um, there have been those people around the building who kind of think that the whole topic 
um, is quite beside the point. Um, in which case, my own instincts are to press on next year uh, and tackle directly the issue of architecture and sexuality. Thank you very much for coming. <laughs>